everybody else's little black boxes. So the one of me is bigger. Um, so have a little play with what view you're using if you need to see me bigger. All right, everybody ready for some bottom today? So we're gonna start as a warm up um, with some bridging or hip rolls. So you're gonna come onto your mat or floor or whatever you've got going today. Lie down on your back, feet flat on the floor, knees nice and bent, and you're coming into some rolling bridges here. So by rolling, what I mean is one vertebrae at a time, coming really slowly up off the floor. If you come to your height that is comfortable for you, what I would like is ribs down. So if you think of ribs as something that can open or close, you're trying to keep your ribs closed. So they will come off the floor, but ribs are closed and your hips lift up. So what is the maximum range you can get your hips without letting your ribs flare, all right? When you get to that position, you should now feel glute max engage. All right, on the way down, you're coming down one vertebrae at a time. So like little strings on a, little beads on a necklace coming down one vertebrae at a time, tailbone's the last thing to hit. So just breathe normally, work your way up, work your way down, taking whatever breaths you like, however many breaths you like, making sure at the top of the range, you're pressing your feet into the floor to engage the glutes without lifting the ribs. All right, keep going there for me while I just make sure I've got everybody sorted. So to engage glutes, it's all about grounding your feet. So the more you think about pressing your feet into the floor, the more you're going to be able to activate through the back of the hips, especially those hip stabilizers. So ground the feet, push them into the floor to drive the hips up. Anybody with a really overactive back, what I see is they end up taking their back and lifting off the ground, which is where you see the rib flare and a feeling of lifting the back rather than pushing with your feet. Excellent. So just a little addition, if you've got your stretchy band today, if you want to feel more glutes at the top of the range, you take your stretchy band, pop it on the top of the pelvis and pin it down onto the floor. If you have children crawling around all over you, you can also use a child placed on your pelvis. They make great weights if they hold still. Good for your core if they don't. All right, and same thing. So you're pressing up into the band. It doesn't have to be a heavy band. It's just the feeling of something to lift up into. So a little bit of resistance here. You can always put weights onto your pelvis, so onto those sticky up hip bones as you lift up. And same thing, rolling down. Good, making sure I've got everybody. Hello everyone, if you're just starting in, roll up this time and you're gonna hold it up at the top. So you can be with no band, with a band, whatever you like. From the top part of the range, you're gonna inhale and lower halfway down. Exhale, squeeze back up. Inhale, halfway down. Exhale, squeeze back up. If you're one of those ribby people, have your hands on the ribs as you're doing it here. If you wanna have that resistance of the band to press into, you can press into that. Think of having a tennis ball between the knees. So a tennis ball between your knees here keeping those legs just hip distance apart. If you want to actually stick a ball there, that can help as well. Good, you've got two more pulses. Squeeze it up. Last one. Hold your pelvis up, float the arms, and you're gonna reach them back towards your ears and back up to the ceiling. Exhale back towards your ears. Don't let those ribs pop. Inhale back up. Two more. Back towards your ears. Back up. Last time, back towards your ears, and then bring them all the way down towards your hips. Exhale, you're gonna lift your heels off the ground. Inhale, lower. Two more, exhale, lift your heels, lower them down. Last time, exhale, lift your heels, lower the heels down, and then roll down through your spine. One vertebrae at a time, and relax to neutral. Good, just have your knees in, rock side to side for me. All right, we've got one more set of bridges. So you ready? This is just the warm up. <laughs> Feet down on the floor. My bum hurts already. Cold. Rolling up, coming up into a bridge position. Ribs melted down, hips pressed up. All right, weight shift. So you're going to shift as much weight as you want onto your right leg. As soon as you see the pelvis start to tilt, you've put too much weight. I need the pelvis to stay stable. So put weight into the right leg. If you want to, the opposite leg floats up. Good, bring it back down. Exhale as you transfer the weight. If you want to, you float the other leg. You don't have to, okay? And inhale back down. 
So exhale to transfer the weight. Inhale, bring the leg down. Exhale to transfer the weight. Good, bring it down. Pelvis lovely and stable. Exhale, transfer the weight. Hold it there, bring your pelvis halfway down. You might still have the band working here and pulse up for eight, seven. It's all about driving that foot into the ground. Five, good for four, three, two, one. Foot comes down. If you need to do this with both feet down, that's fine. Other leg up, pelvis halfway down and pulse up for eight, for seven, for six, five, good, go four, three, two, one, lower the foot down and roll down through your spine. One vertebrae at a time. Good, well you've got that band. Just stretch the leg up and have a little stretch through that hamstring. So leg doesn't have to be completely straight. It can if you want. A straight leg, you're gonna get a little bit more of a neural stretch. A bent knee, you're gonna get a little bit more into that hamstring belly. And breathe, very important if you're stretching. Good. Cross that leg over the body slightly and you'll get the stretch down the side of the leg. Normally an icky stretch where everybody makes this face. That's the one. Good. Pop your other foot into the band. Take the first foot out. Stretch into the back of the leg. Relax the shoulders. The leg can be straight too. You get more of that icky neural stretch. Slight bend. You'll get more into the hamstring muscle belly here. Good, cross it over the body slightly. This comes down more into the ITV or lateral structures of your leg. And breathe. All right, take the band off and roll onto your side. You can pop your head onto your arm or onto some pillows, whatever works best. So lying right down for you. All right, bottom knee is going to be bent. All right, and your top leg is going to be straight. And we're going to work on our good old glute mead muscles here. So glute med is on the side of the hip. If you have dominant quad and hip flexors, this is people especially who have had hip and knee problems, your body is going to want to use the structures at the front side of the leg. What we want is the glute that lives kind of behind the seam of the pants but on the side of the hip. You can normally dig into that one and it's often quite sore. Sometimes people feel like they've had an ice cream scoop taken out of it. All right, so behind the seam of the pants, to get this muscle, I want you to think of rolling forwards like you're going to roll onto your belly and then take your leg backwards in space. Not so far that your back arches, so your core has to be on to hold the pelvis. All right, and then leg lifts and lowers from this position. So you lift it up as high as you can go in this position. If you're Cindy Loppering on me, you're not in the right position. All right, so roll forwards, leg backwards lift and think of lengthening as you lift it up. So your leg is growing longer. You're creating space in the hip joint as the leg lifts. Really nice. So you start to feel kind of a bite in that side of the hip muscle as that leg lifts. Excellent. Hopefully you're finding it. If not, you roll forwards more, take the leg backwards more. Good. Now hold that leg up at hip height and you're going to circle it. Tiny little circles with that whole leg for eight, seven, good, six, five, your bum's going to love me tomorrow, isn't it? Four, three, two, one, circle the other way for eight, seven, six, five, good, for four, three, two, one, and tiny little lifts here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax it down, give it a nice pat. Good, rub those bottoms. Now make sure where you're rubbing is into the side of the hip, not down the front and down the leg. You need to work on the position more there, not right onto that hip bone, okay? Flip the legs around the other side, and in we go. The bottom knee bent, top leg straight, Roll forwards like you're going to roll onto your stomach and pull the leg backwards in space. From here, it's a lift and lower. So if you look down towards your foot, your body should seem to be in a straight line. You're not arching the back to take the back, the leg backwards, but just keeping the front of the hip really open so that leg's not starting to sweep forwards in front of you. 
bodies are very efficient at cheating when they want to. So if they have a reason to use a stronger muscle, they will. We're trying to get it to use the muscle that's often not as strong. So you're lengthening the leg as you lift it up, creating space in the hip joint here. Good. Roll forwards a little bit more. Take your leg backwards a little bit more. You're still lifting and lowering. Now hold that leg up at hip height and circle. Circle backwards for eight. Seven, good. Your core is holding the pelvis stable for four, three, two, one. Circle the other way for eight, seven, six, five. Good. Are you still smiling for three, two, one? Little pulses up for eight, three, two, one, relax it down and give it a nice big pat. All right, onto your stomachs. Something really nice to do before you work on glute max is to release the quads. If your quads are really tight, they're actually gonna stop you from coming into hip extension. So it's quads and hip flexors really. So pubic bone stays onto the floor. You're gonna reach and grab an ankle or shin. If that's not possible, you lasso it with your stretchy bands. I'm doing so gracefully on time. So you can be here and stretching. All right, for some people, your pubic bone won't come anywhere near the floor. That's okay. It just shows you what you have to work on to open up through the front of the hip. All right, everybody else grabbing the shin, pressing pubic bone down into the floor, which will make sure you're not arching your back. You're actually stretching through the front of the leg and hip. So lift, you can release that leg and go the other side. You can just support the head onto the floor if that's easy. Grabbing onto the shin, ankle, foot, wherever you need to, lassoing it if you need to, trying to keep your pubic bone down as much as possible, and breathing. Good. So a glute max warm up now. You're going to come and bring your head onto both hands. What I'm looking for is that you can lift a leg up without arching your low back. So really good practice for anyone that has a very overactive low back. If you can't do it lying flat on the floor, you just pop a couple towels or a blanket under your belly button and it should make it easier. So the key is pubic bone down. You pop your heads down onto your hands. I'm gonna lift mine so I can talk a bit better. Pubic bone stays down, straight leg hovers up off the mat and then lowers down and then the other side. The straight leg hovers up and back down. For proper walking, we actually need 15 degrees of extension, which is this movement, for proper walking gait. And a lot of people don't have it and they don't have the strength in the glutes to get it. And that's where they start to use other walking patterns that aren't serving their body. So pubic bones down, you're just alternating legs lifting up and you should feel glute max, which is that nice big muscle right at the back of the hip lifting the leg. What you don't want to feel is like your hip bones are pushing into the mat. You should actually have a gap between those hip bones, you know the bony ones that stick out in the front, and the mat. You shouldn't have a rotation forwards of your pelvis, so your anchor point is the pubic bone as you're lifting and alternating legs here. Good. Come up onto hands and knees for me. If hands and knees aren't going to work, um, you can do something similar standing or stay on your belly. All right, so your left leg's going to come out behind you. Reach it up behind you. It's going to stay toes tapped on the floor. And you're going to lift it up behind you. Pull it into your belly. The whole time moving this direction without changing your spine. So I want the glute is stretching here and then strengthening as you reach it out behind you. The lengthening muscle, contracting muscle, with all the while staying nice and stable through the back. If you're on your belly, you can just roll onto your side and do something similar here. So reach it out, pull it back behind you. So this is if kneeling's not going to work for you. Okay. So in, reach it out behind you. This time, keep it out behind you. You're going to tap it down and out to the side. Bring it back behind you. Tap it down. So up. Tap it out to the side, up, bring it back behind you. Up, out to the side, up, and back behind you. One more time, up, out to the side, 
up, back behind you. Bend your knee and pulse the back of the thigh up. Keep your core on so your back's not arching for eight, seven little pulses up, six, five, good, you've got four, three, two, one, and relax the knee down. Give your bum a shake, nobody can see you, it's all right. Other leg, opposite leg behind you, you're reaching it up, bending it in. Good, taking it back behind you, bending it in. So how much range of motion through the hip can you get, the hip joint, without moving your spine and pelvis? Good, so glute is lengthening, my glute is contracting. Really nice, working through that leg. One more here, reach it out behind you. Now you're gonna tap it down to the floor, lift it up, bring it out to the side, back up behind you. So tap down, flood it up, out to the side, back behind you. Good, tap down and up, out to the side, back behind you. Last set, tap it down, shoulders away from your ears, out to the side, back behind you. Bend your knee and pulse back of the thigh up for eight, seven, good, six, core on five, for four, three, two, one, relax that knee in, sit your bum down onto your heels, and take a breather, because there's more bum to come, don't worry. Excellent, everybody still with me, hopefully. Coming up to standing, I'm just gonna switch up my here, hopefully don't fall down. Now, I'd like you to find something to grab onto. So door handles work really well. You can find something stable where you are is great. So you're gonna grab onto your door, whatever you've got, pole, um, countertop, anything there. Feet are pretty close to the door. You're going to bend down into a squat, taking your bum behind you. Look down at your shins. I want your shins to be vertical here. So shins stay vertical. In an ideal world, you bring your thighs down parallel to the floor, then press into the floor to come back up. All right, it's a squat, obviously, but because you're bringing your bum down and back, we're gonna get a little bit more glutes and not quite as much quads. It's also a really nice safe position for the knee joints if you do tend to have funny knees. If your knees are angry while you're squatting, try popping something about this shape and size between the knees, All right? Sometimes it just helps to um, hold that alignment a little bit better while we're squatting. So bring it down. When you get to this position, push your heels into the ground and that's where you should feel the glutes initiate the work from. So down and back, press it in. So we have more squat sets to go today. If squats bother people, you come back to these squats for any squat sets we do. Coming all the way up, whatever you're holding on to, just pop your hands on it, walk yourself backwards and stretch your chest through your arms. So if you press your chest down towards the floor, I think we're sticking your bum out. You'll get a stretch through the upper back as well as a hammy stretch here. All right, so back up. Option A, you do another set of those same squats. Option B, we take it into a lunge. Same idea, front leg does all the work and the front shin stays vertical. So you come back into a lunge, use that front leg to drive the back leg up. So lunge it down, front leg drives and presses that back leg up. Good, we've got six more on this side, drive it up. So the back leg's just there for show. It's not doing anything. It's all happening from this front leg. Good, for four more. Heel presses into the ground and drives the other leg up. For three, so that bum connection comes from the grounding into the floor. For two, holding on to something is just letting you bring your body weight back to get into that right position. Last one. Whew, come halfway down and pulse down for five, four. All right, two, one, bring it back up to standing, shake it out. 
shake it on the other side. Otherwise, you're still doing squats for me. Come down into that lunge and drive up the other leg. Good for seven. Lunge it down, press through the heel to come up. Nice for six. Lunge it back for five. All front leg doing the work. Don't let that back leg help as you get tired for four. Press it up for three. And you've got two. Oh, last one. Hard to do while I'm talking to you. And pulse down for five, four, three, two, one. Press it all the way up to standing. Hands or elbows if you've got a surface like a countertop, pop your forearms on and walk yourself backwards into a stretch and breathe. Excellent. So if you still have that surface, so I use a chair for this one, a bent over glute set. So you can do it just bending over, but if you can pop your hands down onto something, or I prefer forearms onto something, you want to ideally have your torso parallel to the floor or close to it, all right? You're standing on your left leg, which is underneath your left hip. Your right leg is going to lift up. I'm going to onto my bookshelf. Your other leg, right leg is going to lift up and down. Again, as much range of motion as you can get here without changing the back. So it comes down just to tap on the floor and then lifts back up again. You shouldn't have a lot of weight in your arms. So your arms are just there to kind of support the upper body. All the weight should be into the leg you're standing on. Now the glute you're gonna feel, this leg, we get some glute max work, the leg that's lifting and lowering. The leg you're standing on, your glute meat is gonna get very warm by the end. Warm's a good word, isn't it? Already getting warm, oh my goodness. Because I knew it was a glute day, she press. All right, hold that leg up, bend your knee, and pulse it up for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then rotate your knee out to the side. I'm going to run into a wall, but you get the idea, and bring it back down. I think doggy the fire hydrant, rotate it out to the side. Bring it back down, last one, rotate it up to the side, bring it back down, and relax the leg, step it out, shake it off, whatever you need to do. Now we've got the other side. All right, so you're standing onto the opposite leg, make sure that foot is under the hip, arms supported somewhere, and the opposite leg lifts and lowers. So lift and lower the opposite leg. The leg you're standing on, I don't mind whether it's fairly straight or a little bit bent, as long as it stays stationary and the opposite leg does the work here. All right, three more full lifts. So you're doing a full lift up, sweep it back down for two. Last one, hold it up there, bend your back knee and pulse up and up. Good, for six more. Four, three, two, one. Then take that knee out to the side, draw it back in. Two more out to the side, pull it back in. Last one out to the side, pull it back in. Relax the feet down and just stretch it out again. Good. Bum's getting warm yet? Oh, don't worry, we've got more. How much time do I have before Zoom kicks me off? Oh yeah, good. All right, take your band, hopefully you've got it. You're going to start by bringing your knees all the way together. If you've got one that's already um, strapped up in a circle, great. If you've got one of these long ones, tie yourself into a beautiful bow. Merry Christmas to me. All right, feet come hip distance apart. You want there to be tension on the band. If there's no tension on the band, then you need to bring them back together and tie tighter. All right. So tension on the band here at the knees. You're going to walk to the right, keeping tension on the band for eight little steps here. Good, I might go out of the screen, that's all right. And then over to the left for eight. Good, still breathing, everyone's still with me. I'm going to move my screen. Good, and then you've got eight squats. 
for eight. You're keeping the knees pressed up into the band for seven. Good. Still think of that bum down and back for five. Squat it down four. For three, shins as vertical as you can for two. Don't let the knees come in towards each other. Last one, coming back up. Same set again, but this time with the band around the ankles. All right, so bands around ankles. Walk to the right for eight. Keep tension on the band for six. Five, good, four more. Three, try not to look too much like the tippy bird. We're all getting tired, but that's all right. Other side for eight. You're maintaining tension on the band. You do have to weight shift, but try not to lean too far. Good, and keep tension on the band and eight squats for eight. Seven, lovely. For five, I haven't heard my kids screaming yet. It's a good sign, isn't it? For three, for two. Last one. All right, last set. Bring your band. You can't see my feet, but it's wrapped around the arches of my feet, around the outside of the feet. All right, and walk over to the right for eight, seven, six, five, good, for four, three, two, one, other way for eight, six, five, four, three, two, one, and eight squats, go eight, nice, seven, Bum goes back and down, six, for five, four, three, two, one, and congratulations, folks. You have done the hard part of your day. We need to stretch the glutes now, probably. I know it will not help with our soreness tomorrow, but we do it anyway. So easy way, sitting. You can take your ankle, cross it over the opposite knee. This knee can be as bent or as straight as you need to, and then you lean it forwards until you get a stretch in the glute. All right, so that's option one. If you prefer more of a pigeon pose, you can bring one leg out in front of you in a bent position on the mat, other leg goes out behind you, and you're folding forwards over that knee for a big bum stretch. A similar thing on your back would be hugging that knee into your chest. One hand knee, one hand ankle. So you're just picking whatever glute stretch floats your belt, really. So pick one of the options I'm giving you. Or ankle crosses over the opposite knee. So same as we were doing in the chair and pulling that towards you. Or over the next few days, we've got the glutes very warm. You may find you need a glute massage. Foam roller works great. Spiky ball works good. Even um, tennis balls or balls that you'll find that you have around for the dog can work quite well. Well, dog balls work good as massage balls, who knew? Not the slobbery ones. You take the roller and you gently and slowly roll around the bum muscles until you find a sore spot that feels quite tender. And then you breathe and you relax your body into it. If the ball you're on, cricket ball for example, is so hard that you can't relax into it, golf ball, then it's too much. You need to back off. You need to be able to find something that you can relax into the massage or let the muscle melt around it. Because we're trying at the end of the day to get the muscle to relax and not to cause bruises. All right, so you're going to have a lovely stretch out of your bottom and whatever else you need to stretch. You're going to do a massage either today or in the coming days. Um, and I hope you enjoyed our glute workout. I'm still trying to figure out how to get this recording available so you can do your glutes again and again and again. And I'll be in touch when I've figured out how to use it. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a lovely rest of your day.